Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. So today we are going to see about costing in Azure. So we all know that in Azure, cost is incurred based on the subscription. For example, as you can see here, I have a subscription called Azure Subscription 1. So all the resources that are created under this subscription will be incurring a cost and it will be associated with this subscription. So I have just one subscription over here. So you can create more than one subscription in a tenant. So as you can see here, I have created only one subscription which is Azure subscription one, and I'm creating all the resources and stuff inside this subscription. So if you come inside to this subscription, there will be a separate section called cost management, where this is completely dedicated to the cost that I incurred in this subscription. And if I go to the cost analysis section over here, so if I click on that, so this is mostly used to analyze the cost. For example, as you can see here, there's a chart over here, which explains what is the cost that has been incurred. So as you can see here, there is a date kind of a drop down over here. By default, it is selected the current month, which is the March 2023. And in March 2023, since it is just four days, so in this four days, I haven't incurred any other cost. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to click on this drop down, change the settings from March 2023 to last 30 days. And also you can see here, there are a lot of different options to choose from. For example, if you want to see the cost analysis for this year, last quarter, last three months, and there are different kinds of uh, things that you can do it. And also you can specify the custom date range. You can do that as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on this last 30 days. And if I click on this, it will give me the cost that has been incurred from Feb 3 to March 4. Cool. So in last 30 days, as you can see here, there are two categories of costs that you can see. One is the actual cost on the left side and the other one is the forecast cost. So what's the difference between actual cost and forecast cost is actual cost is the actual cost that has been incurred in the last 30 days. And this forecast cost is based on your previous uh, kind of usage. Azure has predicted or Azure has forecasted it was going to be $0.27 for this uh, last 30 days. So although it is quite close, uh, but it is not always right. But you can get an insights about how the cost will be incurred using this forecasting option, which is really cool. As you can see here, I have incurred like 0.22 New Zealand dollars in the last 30 days. So as I'm based in New Zealand, all the cost that you're seeing is in uh, New Zealand currency. And one of the interesting thing about this cost analysis is, so if you could scroll down, you can see a uh, different categories of things. For example, the first one is a service name. As you can see here, it gives a beautiful chart. And you can, if you hover over this chart, you can see what is the actual resource that was costing this. My total cost is 0.22 and the entire cost has come from Azure Data Factory. And also you have some storage in the subscription, but the storage cost is zero for now. So this Data Factory cost is mostly due to the uh, task that I was doing uh, based on the previous videos, the copy data activities and stuff. So if you're interested to learn Azure Data Factory, please go to my channel and check the videos out there. And also you can see uh, a different category, which is the location. As you can see here, all the resources that I have created is from one location, which is Australia Gist. And also you can categorize this based on a resource group. As you can see here, I have only two resource group. And as you can see here, out of these two resource group, this is the resource group that has costed more. So this cost analysis gives us some rough idea about like what is the cost that has occurred in that point in time and what are the different resource group that is costing you more. Those kind of things can be analyzed over here. And also you can group by these in different categories. For example, there is an option called group by. So right now it is none, uh, which is a default. So if I click on this, there are a lot of different categories that you can group by uh, the different things to see the cost. For example, one interesting thing is, for example, if I click on this resource, so it will group the cost based on the resource that we have inside the subscription. So as you can see here, since we saw this from the service name uh, category, my total cost comes from only one resource, which is the Azure Data Factory, right? So as you can see here, we can exactly see what is the actual Data Factory resource name, which is costing me money. Cool. So now you have a rough idea about like how to analyze the cost using this cost analysis tab. But one thing you might wonder is like, what if something goes wrong? For example, something goes wrong and it blows up the cost since you have associated your credit card with the subscription and uh, you might think like if something goes wrong you'll lose a lot of money and stuff so this can happen based on many reasons right due to the human error or kind of the activities that you do so to resolve this there are some things that you can configure using the cost management section 
uh, for example the one thing is like setting the budgets so for example if ten dollars of your budget and if the actual cost is going to be five dollars then you get an email stating that you have consumed the 50 percentage of your budget and stuff which will give you a rough idea about how the cost is incurring in your current subscription and stuff so let's see how we can configure this using the option called cost alerts under the cost management cool in the left side under the cost management there is an option called cost alerts so if i click on this cost alerts as you can see here there is no cost alerts uh, that have been created in this subscription so to create a new cost alerts there will be an option called add over here so if i click on this and if i click on add budget uh, there are some of the uh, budget details uh, that you need to enter the first one is the name so i'm going to give you a name called cost alerts so now we have given the name of the budget which is the cost alerts and the next thing is to specify the reset period so as you can see here the monthly is selected i think this is the uh, minimum that you can select and we also have quarterly and annually uh, but i'm going to go with the monthly which is a most you know kind of simpler way of uh, creating this budget cool so now we have set the reset period now the next thing is the creation date as you can see here default one is selected as uh, the first of march uh, which is the current month and the next one is the expiration date so i'm going to select uh, 2028 uh, which gives us like for five years this is the monthly budget that i wanted to uh, set up in the subscription so now the next option is entering the budget amount so as you can see here i should have suggesting us to keep the budget amount as three dollars based on the forecast uh, which means that every month our budget is like three dollars so but i'm going to go with a ten dollars so it's based on your preference like what is the budget that you are uh, okay to keep uh, per month cool so as you can see here from this cool graph so this red dot is the budget and uh, as you can see here ten dollars is the budget uh, that i could afford every month cool so after entering the budget amount and the next thing is to uh, configure the alerts so if i click on next so as you can see here there is some alert conditions that you can specify and uh, let's see how we can configure that now so the first one is like selecting the type the first one is whether you want to do this alerts based on the actual cost or the forecasted cost so i would encourage to go with the actual cost so that you can make sure that your alert is like uh, pretty much very accurate as seen before that forecasted cost is based on forecasting thing that is predicted by Azure itself although it is pretty safe to be go with the forecast that I'm going to go with the actual cost so one thing to notice sometimes you get the email pretty late uh, for example even the issue cost is like crossed your budget you don't get the email straight away sometimes you get uh, the emails very late uh, I think mostly uh, one day late kind of thing so in that case you can go for forecasted thing uh, so that you can get the email beforehand and stuff uh, but you are not actually going to be very sure that it is always going to be right so what I'm going to do is uh, to go with the actual and have different kind of percentage of budget. So what do I mean by that is, for example, I'm going to create the first alert, which is like when I reach the 25 percentage of the budget, which is like $2.50, I should get an email straight away. As you can see here from this cool diagram. So this is the target, which is in the red line. And this is the first alert that is the 25 percentage of the budget, which is $2.50. And also I'm going to create another alert condition, which is also from the actual cost. So if I'm going to select type as well, I'm going to give a budget like $50, which means that $5, as you can see here from this diagram, you have a set up an alert rule uh, for 25 percentage, which is $2.5 and 50 percentage, which is $5. And also I'm going to set another alert rule, which is like the same. I'm going to go for actual type, but now it is 75 percentage. Cool. So now I have set up three alert condition. So if it is reaching this 25 percentage, which is $2.50, I should be getting an email that Azure cost reaches the 25 percentage of your overall budget, which is $2.5. So that when you get an email, you know that the 25 percentage of your budget is already consumed. And when the Azure cost reaches this part, you get another email stating that the 50 percentage of your budget is consumed so that you can, you know, prepare for the next or you can uh, go to the cost analysis and see uh, what is the resource that is costing you money and stuff and based on that you can you know rectify it uh, you can delete the resource or you can change the configuration you can reduce the compute power and stuff and as you can see here now we have an error message stating that 
you need to choose an action group and stuff. So what is this action group is like you can create a group and inside that group you can add multiple emails so that whenever this alert condition satisfies you get an email to all the email IDs that is inside that group. Cool so for now I'm not going to go with the action group uh, so instead I'm going to use the below option which is the alert email option. So what you can do is like you can uh, specify any email ID over here. So I'm going to specify the email ID of this channel talks tech at gmail.com and you can add more than one email over here. So all the emails that gets added to here will be notified uh, whenever the threshold reaches. So I encourage you to add an email uh, which you frequently use so that you are not giving an email ID that you are not actually regularly using that. So you can miss the email uh, that has been triggered. Cool, so now we have given an email ID and uh, we have specified all the alert condition and you can see clearly what is going to happen using this cool uh, graph as well. So now the next option is to select the languages. So I'm going to go with English, uh, maybe UK. So yeah, so pretty much that's it. So we have created a budget first, which is the $10 and we have set an alerts, which is free alerts. The first one is when we reach the 25% of the budget and the next one is the 50 and the final one is the 75% of the budget. So when you're happy about all these details, then you can go ahead and click on create to create the uh, budget and the uh, alert rules. So it's validating. Cool. So as you can see here now the budget is created. So if I go to the budgets under the cost management, so if I click on the budget, as you can see here, we can now see the budget that has been created over here. And you can see all the information over here, like what is the name of the budget and what is the scope, which is the subscription ID and the reset period and all other stuff. And as you can see here, uh, the budget is $10 and you can also see the progress over here right now. There are no costs that has been incurred. So whenever the Azure is incurring the cost, you can see the progress over here. And when the progress is like 25%, you get an email triggered. And when you reach 50%, you'll get an, another email. And the same will happen when you actually reach 75% of the budget. For example, when you actually receive an email uh, based on this cost alerts, you can see all the cost alerts uh, using this cost alerts tab. So you can see for this month, what are the different alerts that I have received and stuff, which is really cool. And when you actually receive any cost alerts and stuff, then you can make use of this cost analysis tab to see uh, what is the resource that that is costing you money. And you can take steps according to that. Since cost is associated with all the resources that we are creating using Azure, so I would strongly encourage to create this kind of alerts and budgets so that you get an insights about uh, what's going on in your subscription. And also you can see that now we can see the budget inside the cost analysis as well. Uh, as you can see here, we have specified the budget as $10. And now inside the cost analysis, you can see our mon monthly budget as well, which is really cool. That's it for today. I hope you enjoy the session. Please like, share and subscribe for more videos like this. So check out my YouTube channel to see other videos related to Azure and all the data engineering tools and stuff that I'll be uploading in the future. Cool. Thanks for listening. See you in another video. Until then, cheers. Bye.